um, uh, with his office, and so we're going to start beginning that transaction transition as well. I do think, you know, we are going to have a little bit of a shift of focus uh, in the office. Um, you know, Attorney General Herring uh, was very vocal about the fact that he turned the office into a progressive powerhouse. Those are his words, not mine. And I had campaigned uh, and went to the voters of Virginia asking them to hire me. And one of that was uh, wanted to get it shifted back into more public safety and, and a law enforcement focus, uh, precisely at a time when the murder rate's the highest it's been in over two decades in Virginia. And so that's going to be a big uh, focus for me and why I see some of these fine individuals uh, that are part of my transition team uh, behind me. Uh, I'm a, one of my guide stars in my life is recognize you're not the smartest guy in the room, but recognize uh, that you're, you could be smart enough to know when you hear good ideas. And, uh, and so I also love to know uh, past practices, what's worked and what hasn't worked. And so I'm proud that um, you know, helping to lead my uh, transition team are former Attorney Generals Jerry Kilgore, Mark Early, Jim Gilmore, Bob McDonald, Ken Cuccinelli, and Richard Cullen. Um, Jerry Kilgore will be one of my point people uh, in this transition period. Uh, former Governor George Allen as well is advising and assisting in the transition. Uh, as I mentioned, we are uh, getting refocused on public safety, uh, and that's why I'm honored to have both Sheriff uh, Mike Chap Chapman of um, Loudoun, County, Loudoun County here by my side, Sheriff Carl Leonard also of, of Chesterfield County, also Sheriff Glenn Hill of Prince William County. Uh, I was a former prosecutor, as many of you guys know, uh, in Virginia Beach, uh, so I'm honored to have also as part of my transition um, Bethany Harrison. Commonwealth Attorney of Lynchburg, uh, Nancy Parr, the Commonwealth Attorney of the City of Chesapeake, uh, Stacey Davenport, the Commonwealth Attorney of Chesterfield, uh, Chuck Slemp, the Commonwealth Attorney of Wise County, and Colin Stolley, the Commonwealth Attorney of the City of Virginia Beach, uh, to help advise me in this uh, transition role as where the Attorney General can come alongside and work alongside and with uh, our Commonwealth Attorneys, as well, obviously, as our Sheriffs and Public Safety. Uh, I have a a uh, group of attorneys that are going to be advising me in this transition period as well. Uh, A.J. Ferrati, Hunter Hanger, uh, Chuck James, Ashley Taylor, uh, Elizabeth McClanahan, he, uh, he was former Chief Deputy Attorney General and served on the Virginia Supreme Court, Christopher Nolan, <clears throat> and Stan Baldwin, who also was a senior counsel at Amerigroup and is going to help and assist on uh, a variety of health care involved uh, issues. Uh, an additional in addition that to the uh, additional advisor, we have uh, Yesley Vega, Prince William Board of Supervisors, uh, Michelle Zajur, Chairman of the Virginia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and Nicole Riley uh, with the NFIB. That is an aspect of the office I want to look at, which is, uh, you know, sometimes, and I've said before, uh, we do have a problem sometimes with people in government where they assume good intentions guarantee good results. That's not always the case. Sometimes they don't really grasp the uh, unintended consequences, and that sometimes happens with our business regulations, where maybe they're well-intentioned, uh, but in many ways they're hurting the very people we want to help. And uh, I've always uh, been a big believer in building a bottom-up economy, not a top-down. Uh, Two-thirds of all new jobs are created by small business owners, uh, those that are the first to get there in the morning, the last to leave at night. And if you talk to them, as I have, and I know Glenn Youngkin has as well on the campaign trail, and you talk to them continuously with things they're facing, one of the things they bring up is kind of the regulatory framework is getting really, really difficult for them. And so that's why I'm proud to have uh, Nicole and Michelle to help advise me on that. Uh, Janet Kelly, uh, former Secretary of the Commonwealth and also served uh, in the Attorney General's office under uh, former Attorney General and Governor Bob McDonald. Uh, Jamison Fowler is going to be advising me on a variety of IT issues. And then Dr. Bill Thomas of Hampton University as well. So that's my initial list. Uh, we've been elected not even 48 hours, and uh, uh, so I suspect that this group of folks that I'm going to lean on and, and seek their advice and counsel will grow uh, in the weeks and uh, the time ahead. We're in this kind of two and a half month transition period where I think the initial phase right now is just setting up the system in place to do the transition, candidly. Uh, and I think the next phase uh, will be getting into a little more detail. but. Uh, that is going to be a big part of uh, what we're going to do is I'm a big believer measure twice and cut once. And so right now we're in the kind of measuring phase where we are uh, getting our systems in place so we can then move forward to the transition and then 
uh, hit the ground running because uh, we'll get in on January 15th, uh, you know, right with the legislative session has already started. Obviously, I'm still a legislator now, and I know how hectic that process is. And so we want to try to, as much as possible, be ready to be up and running uh, effective on day one. Uh, and I look forward to doing that. Um, happy to take a few questions uh, from from the audience. Yes, sir. Uh, Matt Oliver with Green Country. What, what law enforcement duties do you anticipate or, or hope to take on? Because I guess I've heard different conceptions of the Attorney General's office. And I feel like the Attorney General's standard goal is it's like the state's law firm as opposed to the office of Vice Enforcement, which I'm not totally familiar with that kind of like direct uh, law enforcement. Well, listen, you have original jurisdiction on all computer crimes. Um, you also uh, do a variety of issues on the fraud front. You have consumer protection. That's one of the campaign issues that I talked about was setting up a division within the Attorney General's office just focusing on uh, seniors, um, senior strike force. Now, may have a different name by the time we uh, get in, but it's going to be focused on particularly at a time when we have an aging population, a lot of seniors being taken advantage of uh, to protect them. One of our major legislative initiatives, which we had talked about on the uh, campaign, was um, – to allow us right now the way it works is if a sitting commonwealth attorney uh, requests it we can come in and prosecute a case on their behalf uh, we're going to be seeking a legislative change and governor glenn young governor elect glenn youngkin has already indicated that he would sign that into law but a bill that would essentially say if the chief law enforcement officer in a jurisdiction either the chief of police or the sheriff makes a request because a commonwealth attorney is not doing their job then i'm going to do their job for them and I'm thinking specifically some of the uh, so-called social justice commonwealth attorneys have been elected, particularly in Northern Virginia. Um, um, it, it, we, we have obviously are aware of some pretty horrific cases that have made the public where they fail to do their job. And uh, if there's anything that I want to bring back to the forefront in this process or the victims, uh, that is that you know, I could tell you as a former prosecutor, those are the individuals that you remember are the victims. I don't remember the defendants so much, and so that's been a little bit of my frustration that I have seen is I think the victims have been forgotten, and um, and when prosecutors are making plea deals on child rape cases over the objection of the family, I have a serious problem with that. So we're going to have a legislative fix on that, and then obviously you could do a, joint, a variety of joint task force. Uh, Project Exile was an incredibly successful program for the Attorney General's office would work with the U.S. Attorney's Office to prosecute uh, people using guns in the commission of a felony. Uh, it, 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 our, I'm old enough to remember when Richmond was the murder capital of America, and uh, I think that's going to be a critical component as well. Human trafficking is a huge issue for me. Uh, I want to get a real sense of where they are right now in this office. Do they have a joint task force with the federal authorities on that? Um, because we have a huge problem in Virginia. Uh, it's a transient, both 81 and 95. Uh, has a large amount of human trafficking that happens in both of those corridors. It's a multi-generational um, crime because it, it affects the individual and it, it, could, it affects uh, almost every aspect of the life. And uh, that's, a, that's a very big personal issue for me. So yeah, there is a huge law enforcement component in the office in addition, obviously, to um, being the attorney for the Commonwealth. I have a two-fold question. Uh, the first one being, do you plan to investigate Loudoun County Public Schools and the recent <coughs> sexual assaults that have happened there? Yes. And the follow-up to that, we know the rape kit backlog was eliminated last year. What are you planning to do to ensure that a backlog doesn't happen again? Well, listen, I, I think that was one of the great accomplishments of uh, Attorney General Herring's office, um, and uh, I applaud him for that. And I will continue to make sure that it's not the case. I think the uh, the parole board needs to be fired. I think that is a decision that's going to rest with Governor-elect Yunkin, and I think he can uh, address that. I, I think, knowing his heart, I think the main thing is make sure victims aren't forgotten. I think that is a critical component. Uh, uh, when Governor George Allen was governor, he made sure that uh, he had victims and victims' voices were heard on that parole board. Uh, but the fact you have a situation like Patrick Schooley, who had not one, not two, but three life sentences without the possibility of parole for the brutal home invasion, rape, and murder 
of 78-year-old Bessie Roundtree, and Bessie Roundtree's family found out that Patrick Schooley was back on the street, even though he had a life sentence, when they heard about it on the news. That's unconscionable. That's just unconscionable to do that to a victim. It's, it's, so uh, I think the first priority is make sure uh, victims or voices are being heard in that process. Uh, my general position uh, on, on parole is I believe in the abolition of parole for violent offenders. Uh, but listen, the parole board makeup and the decision is going to be uh, uh, with Governor Glenn Youngkin, Governor-elect Glenn Youngkin. Did you anticipate any changes with the way your office handles uh, the civil rights division and the uh, Texas Cutoff Shortening Service? Well, I don't know how uh, uh, Attorney General Herring has set that up. And so uh, we're right now setting up the system in place to do the transition. And once we do that in place, then we can get a sense of what, how the office is being structured and, and how it works. And as I said, smart enough to know when, uh, that I'm not the smartest guy in the room and I'm smart enough to know when I hear good ideas, I'm going to want to talk to other attorney generals on how they also have run the office, how they have set that up, and I'm going to get their wisdom and counsel and then um, make decisions accordingly. Are there any of initiatives that your service would like to I have been so focused on getting through Tuesday, and I'm going to look through and what his initiatives are, and then I'll make decisions then. For Virginia citizens who watch the news via Telemundo, if you feel comfortable answering the question in Spanish, feel free. If not, that's fine. But how do you? What what plans do you have to help the Hispanic community here in Virginia? Well, I mean, listen. I think the Latino community is overwhelmingly they believe in the same thing as so many Virginians are, uh, which is uh, they they believe in faith and freedom and family and entrepreneurship. And right now, as Governor Glenn Youngkin noted, uh, we're 49th in the country in, in small business startups, and I think it's going to be critically important to see what are those barriers of entry. Uh, but I've said before that if, um, you know, I recognize I've been the first child of an immigrant ever elected attorney general, so if your family came to this country seeking hope and opportunity, there's a good chance your family's a lot like my family. It would be the biggest honor of my life to be your attorney general. All right. Any other questions, thoughts? All right. I so appreciate everybody. We'll have more information for you all. And um, if we have not already set one out, we will send out a press advisory on the um, uh, on our announced transition team. All right. Thank you all. God bless.